Welcome to the Fishbowl Radio, everybody. My name is Chief here, and joining me today is Jalen. We're doing our Louisiana Raging Cajun versus ULM preview for this weekend coming up here. Louisiana Raging Cajun men's basketball also took on Wright State. We'll recap that matchup there and preview their upcoming matchups here. Louisiana Raging Cajun women's basketball will recap their matchup as well and preview their upcoming matchups as well here. And also, happy trails to Louisiana Raging Cajun track and field head coach Lon Batto. He announced his retirement today. So during his tenure, he had 17 All-Americans, including three-time All-American Albert Fournette, two-time All-American Jasmine Manuel, and two-time All-American Maria Benivu. And, you know, and Morgan, and they had a bunch of great uh, players that played for the Raging Cajuns. He had, I mean, a lot of All-Americans under his tenure there. So, without further ado, here let me introduce everybody to Jalen. How are you doing today, Jalen? Hey, I'm doing well, Chief. It's been another loss for Cajun football, but I will say, uh, Coach Battle also sent five athletes to the national championship this past track season. So, congrats to him on his retirement. I'm gonna miss you, Coach. Yeah, it, he did a lot of great things for the track and field program for Louisiana Raging Cajun. So, uh, Louisiana Raging Cajun uh, volleyball team. Fell to Coastal Carolina last week, and Coastal Carolina ended up winning the Sun Belt tournament. So, congratulations to them. So, with all that out of the way, let's talk about this um, the elephant in the room that everybody wants to kind of discuss and see what's going on here. So, the Cajuns are on a three game losing streak. Their last win, they haven't won in the month of November yet. Um, lost at Arkansas State, lost at home to Southern Miss. And at Troy, like I said before, and I said it many times this year, this schedule should have been an eight-win schedule floor. There shouldn't have been seven wins, shouldn't have been six wins, shouldn't have been five wins. It should have been eight or above because the schedule was weak comparatively to what we had before here. So now, look at like non-conference. Old Dominion's five and six. Northwestern State's zero oh and six. UAB is four and seven. They won all those games. Mi Minnesota was five and six. Texas State six and five. Georgia State. Very several of these games were one score games, like the Southern Miss game, Troy game, Georgia State game, and the Cajuns only won like two of these close games within their history. Buffalo should have been a blowout, but the Cajuns let them back in that game. This Cajun team has a very bad time of this finishing under Coach Desimo's tenure. Not this this year, but last year as well. They should have beat Troy last year. They fell apart, and they let him back in the game. And they let him win the game. So, um, ULM, they have nothing to lose and everything to gain. They can finish the season three and nine if they beat the Cajuns here, which I would even put – out. if you lose twice to ULM – there's so much more resources at UL compared to ULM. It's not even a debate of who should be the higher ranked program in this state. And that's not just coming. That's just pure optics. If you look at from the money being raised in the athletic uh, prowess of both these schools here. And if you look at like how much money they generate, the recruiting, everything points in UL's favor, like facilities just looks better. Okay. It feels getting redone. That's also another big thing um, that we'll talk about in touch here. And we'll talk about attendance in it because I think that's something that's going to come up and they think it's going to solve an issue. But we'll we'll kind of discuss that a little bit later on this podcast here. But Jalen, uh, they played better against Troy. They looked a lot better compared to Southern Miss and Arkansas State. Uh, the, they've managed to do some better things defensively. They had a bad key eye call, but... Like I say, with close calls like that in the games, you don't want to put yourself in that situation to lose a ball game like that. So what do you think, Jalen? Yeah, I agree with your chief and your uh, statement that you made earlier about how uh, the Cajuns should have beat Troy last year. Well, honestly, they should have beat Troy this year. I mean, they played a almost perfect game. I mean, Chandler Fields outplayed uh, Troy's QB, uh, Gunnar Watson, I, I, I would say. I mean, he did have that one interception. But other than that, I mean, he played a great game. The receivers, K 
came up big. Harvey Bruce started Neil Johnson. Neil Johnson scored another touchdown, which is which is good good for him. So he have a he's been having a good a good year recently at the back end of the season. But Troy just uh at the end they just able they were just able to take it. They were able to score late in the fourth quarter, take the lead. The Cages were not able to uh, get the ball in the end zone. And I mean Troy just was the better team this day, and they were the home team, and that's why they clinched the West uh, Division of the Sun Belt. But also going forward, it's uh, you know the most dangerous, two most dangerous words in sports is Game Seven. Well, I think the most dangerous words, two most dangerous words in college football, is bowl game. And this game gives ULM, if the Cages don't win, they don't get a bowl. But not only do they not get a bowl, they'll end on a four-game losing streak, and that's not a good look for the Cajuns or their coach at this point. So I, it's it's really tough. But like you said, ULM doesn't have anything to play for. They don't even have a win in the Sun Belt. They're two and eight on the year so far. They're just playing to be playing. And they upset the Cajuns at home at Cajun Field on senior night. It's not, it's not looking, it's not looking good. I want to bring up an interesting stat for you here. And I think this is one that a lot of people are going to be kind of shocked by. So for people that don't think this is a rivalry game, and I've always said you cannot predict rivalry games. That's something that is just because rivals love to hate each other. And if you look at the history between UOM and the Louisiana Raging Cajuns here, there's been some, like even with Napier being there, for some odd reason, They've played each other very close in some games under Napier, and some games were just blowouts, right? So th this is a definitely a rivalry game. This has to feel the rivalry game. It's all at, on the line. The stakes are high. You've got to perform. So I know there's some people out there that don't think this is a rivalry game, but at the history, I remember during COVID year, the Cajuns being like 70 to 20. I remember the 2020 season very well. Cajuns do lead the series against ULM 22 to 16. The Cajuns lost to him last year, 17 to 21. And in 2021, when the Cajuns won the Sunbelt Conference title, they beat them 21 to 16. In 2020, it was kind of an outlier. You know, you got the COVID year at 70 to 20. 31 to 30 in 2019, 31 to 28 in 2018, 2017 had a double overtime loss to ULM 56 to 50, 2015, well, 2016 had a 30 to 3 win, 2015, 30 to 24, 34 to 27 in 2014. We were at the 2014 game and 2016 and 2015 games. 2017, we were there. We didn't make the trip in 2018, 2019, 2021. We all made it to those games as well. But if you look at the history between these two schools, it's been ever since 2009, there's only been two instances where this has been kind of blowouts, which the blowout years were been 2020 and 2016, or the only two years since 2009 that this has been kind of closer than a one-possession game. Now, they've had some, like, a lot of one-possession games here for sure. There was a while in the mid-2000s where the Cajuns were getting beat by ULM from 02 to 07. The Cajuns only beat them one time in that time frame. The Cajuns have turned it around recently, winning four of their last five. If you want to do – they won four of their last six. Um, They won five of their last seven against some of them for that since 2014. They've beaten them seven of their last nine games. So looking at all that information, a lot of one possession games. I think that trend continues on Saturday. I would not be shocked if UOM went in there and beat the Cajuns. I, and that's something that I think we need to kind of like look at here. Chandler Fields, he, he did a good job Saturday. It was his best played game he played since he became the, the quarterback, starting quarterback for the Cajuns with Zeon and uh, Ben being out. So that's two quarterbacks that you're down. You're down to your third-string quarterback. 
whoever's remaining on the quarterback thing next season, I think the Cajun can be good at quarterback, whether it be um, Chandler Fields if he decides to stay or enter a transfer portal, or you got Zeon coming back, or um, Dwayne Winfield. They're going to be good at quarterback position. But I think if the Cajuns lose this game, and if they don't have a winning season next year, I think the Cajuns have a new head coach when they open up or later the Lord Stadium in 2025. Because you can't go in there having three straight losses as a – like three straight losing seasons as a program to open up a new stadium. Nobody's going to show up. So if you're trying to hype up a new stadium and you have someone that has three straight losing records as a coach, who's going to go to your game if you're not playing winning football? That's where you get the bandwagon effect. Bandwagon effect's a really big thing here. We saw the Cajun field be packed for the Sun Bell Conference Championship game. 31,000 people showed up over there that game. So for people that think that the winning's going to help out a lot, but, I mean, we're, we're not planning on, you know, we want to plan on getting all these people back here. We got to find incentive ways to get them into the stadium. Like, and that's just something we have to look at as we go further along down the road here. So, but, you know, having, if we lose the UOM, four straight losses entering 2024, it's not a good way you want to build your fan base. And, you know, I just don't, I just don't see Desimo being the Rage education head coach in 2025. I just don't see it happening. I just, there's a part of me that thinks that if you have a trend of continuing, it's year one and year two is like your biggest growth in terms of like discipline and talent and stuff like that. So when you remain the same, same you're gonna be stagnant. So, and the Cajuns have all they're they're at the bottom of the West basically. The only team they're above is UOM. So look at the standings right now. They definitely took a even dive compared to last year against their peers. So, I don't know, Jalen, what you think? I think it's and like I said, uh, Coach Jansen is, is a great person. I think I think he's even good. He's a good coach, but you can't lose three straight games, especially when I would say at least two of those. Because we all we all knew Troy was a great team, and and the Cajuns played great, but we ultimately knew Troy is the best team in the West, and they they were going to lose to Troy. We kind of already figured that out, but. I mean, Arkansas State, you could kind of say, uh, you know, they're second in the West right now. They got a Great young quarterback, but to lose to Southern Miss, who's at the bottom of the Sun Belt at the time, only had one Sun Belt win, which is against ULM. You had them at home. I mean, it's just those type of games you you can't lose. And the fact that they did lose, it puts more pressure on Coach Dez because, like you said, three straight losses. It could be four after Saturday, and if he goes with if the Cajuns don't get the ball game, they lose to ULM at home. It's it's going to be – it's kind of embarrassing. I mean, you know, honestly, to lose four straight games and you're going into next year where you're going to be losing a lot of people, you already don't use the transfer portal. And like you said, you de decline from year one to year two, and then year three, if year three gets worse, he won't be in that uh, that new Our Lady of Lords uh, stadium in 2025. But I just think he just, they have to – this is a do-or-die game right here for Cajuns. They have to win this game. They just, just have to. His coaching style is – is different than what uh cases have in the past with Billy Napier, but that's all right because as long as you're winning games, you know, and putting the cages in the positions to win, that's that should be all that matters. Right now, they're on a the decline, and they have to they just have to win this game against ULM to get to a bowl game at least and try to save this from from having that talk with somebody saying, "Oh, I don't know if you're the coach, our coach next year," because I don't I don't want to see it happen to them, but it just have to be ULM. And then all I think all of that will be on pause until next season once they beat ULM on Saturday. This is not an indictment on Dez that I want to say here. It's just a business decision. Dez is a nice guy, you know. Um, it's just a business decision at the end of the day. So whether like if I performed bad at what I do, would people even like listen or you know if I like that's the thing. That's just kind of giving insight on stuff that's going on. So, I mean, I don't like having these conversations, and I don't like doing it at all. It was a different conversation last – because, like, we talked about the the more cuts fit thing. At, toward the end of, like, you go back and look, listen to the fishbowl 
uh, episodes from way back when. I think we got them on YouTube still, but like then we're like, yeah, he needs to go at this point because it's not, it's not the same thing right there. It's nothing personal against these guys. It's just a business decision at the end of the day. And you know, whenever you got donors going to be pulling out, and you know, like that, you need money to run your program, and that's it's all money related and it's all business related. If you're not filling the seats, then you got to look at changes somewhere else, right? So. How long can your program sustain if they're not having people go pay tickets? Uh, TV money can only bring you so far, but even having attendance, like if you had like App State and JMU and all these other peer schools that are filling up, like they have over 20 some thousand people on college game day for uh, JMU's for their thing. So, I mean, I know that's going to get brought up a lot and you we're kind of on the, we're on the same level as JMU. I mean, like that's our, that's our peer institution and we should be having the same kind of like, you know, um, same level as them and try to be the same competition. And that's, it just comes down to money at the end of the day, whether they have, like, can the Cajuns continue running at the pace that they're running? I, I think that's kind of like the the problem I have with it. Um, and just seeing where, where everything goes from that point on. But I do think that, if I'm I'm gonna make this prediction here with this game here, I don't want to see Dez lose his job. I don't want to see anybody lose their job. But my my head is telling me one thing, and my heart is telling me a different thing. So it's like I think if the Cajuns play like they did against Troy, they're gonna beat UOM. If they play like they did against Arkansas State or Southern Miss, they're gonna lose this game. Whatever Cajun team shows up. That's my prediction on it. I just think if it, the one that plays against Troy shows up, they'll beat UOM. If the one that shows up against Arkansas State or Southern Miss shows up, they'll lose that game. So I, I think UOM beats UOM at home because I just can't think of them losing two games in a row to UOM, like based on the recent trends in history that goes on there. So I think they go to the bowl. I think they go to a bowl game and it looks like projection wise, it's going to be first responders bowl. But this is the most significant game in the Coach Desimo coaching era. That's what I got to say about it. What do you think, Jalen? Yeah, I think the Cajuns will uh, win this game against ULM. And, yes, I do agree. This is the most important game of Coach Des's coaching career right here against ULM out of all people. I didn't think we would be saying this at the beginning of the year. But against ULM, yes, this is – it's his time to shine. It's just, it's, he needs to get his team ready, prepared, play exactly like they played against Troy, and UL's, ULM's offense will not be like Troy's. I can guarantee you that. So the Cajuns should come out with an easy win. But we have to see what happens on Saturday because it's time to tell. I think it's going to be one possession. That's how close I think it's going to be. But enough of football. Let's transfer over into basketball here. Louisiana Raging Cajun men's basketball team played today. They ended up losing to Wright State. 91 to 85. They pick it up again next Monday to, on Loyola, New Orleans. They come to Lafayette and the Cajun Dome. Then they pick it up again November 30th and take it on Sanford. They should beat Loyola. Like I thought they were going to be right state, but I guess I was wrong there. This is still early. This team is still trying to find their own like roles. You're trying to develop roles with your team and see who's who at this point here. So we'll see what happens here. I think they'll beat them and I think they'll beat Sanford. That Louisiana Tech game is going to be an interesting one to me because I think that's going to be one we're going to find out a lot about them because they'll be their first, uh, really, honestly. I mean, they lost to Toledo. That was kind of a little hurt there, but Toledo is undefeated. at Wright State's one and three. So don't really know how good the Cajuns are this year, but I got them beating Loyola and I got them beating Sanford here. So Demas Folks has been handling the rock for the Cajuns here. So we'll see what happens there. Um, in regards to that game there, but it'll be interesting interesting to see what happens with them. Jalen, what you think? I think the Cajuns are trying to figure out an identity because I think last year, you know, it was, hey, let's get to Jordan Brown. Or if he's being double teamed, let's kick it out to Greg Williams Jr. He'll make a three. And then Kentra Garnett, he'll, he's open. Let's get him a three. And they had all these, like, these backup bigs, like Isaiah Richards coming off the bench, who he uh, transferred out from the Cajuns. But, I mean, they had a lot of guys in multiple positions that did 
did everything for the team. And now this year with some younger guys and some guys that's, that's in the lineup that hasn't been in the lineup, you know, in the past and, or injuries getting back into the lineup. It's like, you got to, Bob Marlin has to figure out a way how to mesh these guys together, see what lineups uh, work well together. But I think so far he's at the same starting lineup throughout the season so far. I don't know if he's going to make a change because they're only two and two. I mean, like I said, I thought they were going to be Wright State too. Wright State was 0-3 heading into the contest. But, I mean, 23 points from Joe Charles and Kobe Julian, 23 for them a piece. I mean, that's that's pretty good for, for your team. But the fact they still lost by six, it just, it just goes to show you they need – they need more than just somebody putting the ball in the basket. They need defensive stoppers. They need shoot more shooters. It's just a it's just this is a team that I think can can win the Sun Belt again, even though they have a lot of young guys. But Kobe Julian is a, is a veteran on this team. Joe Charles is back. But Themis Folks, who the beginning of the year you thought he's going to transfer out, he decided to come back. He's kind of like a leader of this team. Kendrick Garnett is still there. So I mean. I think the cage is ceiling is very high. You need to figure things out. Yeah, that's one thing I I th I've noticed. The Cajuns lack a real like power presence down there on in the center or a power forward role. Um, that like getting interior shots and making them whenever you get like second chance buckets, it's finishing, uh, possessions, getting points on the board and playing like great defense is something the Cajuns need to step up on. I think in that game against Wright State. But, I mean, that's just some observations that we saw. Like I said, we don't know how good this team is yet. It's, it's still very early. Like, RPI doesn't really give us much anyway. It's got the Cajuns' uh, RPI right now at 246. It's not great. Um, does it, it doesn't, like, really factor in. Um, the strength of schedule right now is at 246 as well. Strength schedule is 181, so there's a lot going on. They'll probably figure it out, and we'll see what's going on with men's basketball once we go along further down the road here. Like I said, I think they win their next two games against Loyola and Sanford. I think they'll be fine. It's November. A lot of basketball has to be played. It's where they hit the panic button. What do you think, Jalen? You think they pick up their next two wins? Oh, yeah. I think they could beat uh, Loyola, Loyola. Oh, excuse me. And Sanford. I mean, even though – um. Sanford is on the road. Loyola is at home. I think the book could come out with two wins and then heading into uh the bulk of December. I think if they pull up some wins against Louisiana Tech too, I think that's the that's the game right there where the kids just say, Hey, we need to see the whole coach Marlin says, Hey, this is the game right here where I need to see if this lineup is ready to go against top tier competition, especially the teams in our state. So I think I think the Cajuns will be up to the task. I think they'll be able to win these next couple of games. All right. So we're going to switch gears here and talk about Louisiana Reeducated Women's Basketball. Tamara Johnson uh, been doing playing very well for the Cajuns here. They beat Nichols 69-63 on November 18th, about two days ago. They play Xavier tomorrow at 7 o'clock in the Cajun Dome. Now, admission is free. So, I mean, if you want to go to a basketball game but you don't want to spend any money, hey, that's the perfect time to go to one. So. Loyola and New Orleans, they're both non-division one, what they say here. So I think the Cajuns win both these games here. Then they got UNO on December the 2nd, which that's like a whole nother Saturday. But I think they'll win their next two games. They had an overtime win against Nichols. They played very well against Auburn. They kind of didn't shoot as well against Kent State and the Cajun Dome too much. Uh, they only shot 29.6% from the floor. And three point land was uh basically non existent, only sixteen point seven. Kent State didn't shoot great at all either. So that's something here. But I mean you can have cold nights there. Cajuns actually outshot Florida from the field goal range, but three pointers. Cajun actually bit better than them. But the difference in that game was Auburn was able to get to the free throw line and make more free throws than the Cajuns percentage wise. Um the attempts, the Cajuns had like more attempts in there. So that's what we got going on this week here. It's just going to depend on um, what happens uh, for the rest of these games here. So I think the Cajun win their next two. Jalen, what you think? Yeah, I think I think the Cajuns are, uh, are playing great so far this year. I mean, I know that, yeah, they did just get the win against Nichols. They're 2-2 two and two also, just like the men. And – but I think in the past, the Cajuns kind of relied on Ty Doucette as to be their leader. 
And now with Brandy Johnson back from injury, I think she's looking better than ever. Tag team with Samara Johnson down low. I mean, I think I think that's the one-two punch the Cajun's women's team need to make a make a run. Not only some, but could make a run in the NCAA tournament. I think even with the new girls they have on the roster, I think the Cajuns look are looking great so far, and they can they can shoot the ball when they when they want to. Like you said, they struggled against Kent State, but you know, there's cold nights always. That's always going to happen. So I think they'll pick up two great. home wins against Xavier and Loyola and then head into uh, the first week of December on the road, taking on New Orleans. Yeah. So um, we're not going to pick any Sunbelt football games too much this week. JMU did lose, so they're not undefeated no more. So that's interesting to see. Um, but uh, I mean, cause there's not much on the schedule. I mean, like, now there's a potential, right? So the Sun Belt's in a very interesting spot here. There's a potential to have twelve, literally twelve games. Like they twelve bowl teams is the potential for the Sun Belt here. So that's one thing that will be very interesting to find out and see what's going on there. So we'll see here. Let's look at the Sun Belt schedule here for the rest of these games here. That is coming up in this week here. So it's going to be, you know what, Jalen? I'm just kidding. We're actually going to pick these games. You thought I would actually let you get away without making no picks in the Sun Belt this week. You were wrong. So <laughs> Troy, Sun Belt West champions taking on Southern Miss. Jalen, I got Troy winning this one. Who you got? Oh, yeah. Troy, easily. They already clinched the West. They just. They're trying to end the regular season off on a good foot. I'm going to go with Troy in this one. Georgia State taking on Old Dominion. Old Dominion needs a win to get the boy eligibility. Like, that's one of the 12 teams we were talking about. Who you got, Jalen? I'm going to go with Old Dominion in this one. I, I really think their defense is is, is surprising team this, uh, this year in the Sun Belt, honestly. Not just because they beat the Cajuns, but the way the defense is playing uh, all year long. And like you said, they're one win away from eligibility. I think, I think they're going to get it. I like the way you think I'm picking Old Dominion myself here. I think they'll beat Georgia <laughs> State. Georgia Southern versus App State. Oh, a good old rivalry game here. This one's been going back for a while here. App State needs a loss from Coastal Carolina to get in the championship game. James Madison, they're not eligible for, uh, but they have a lawsuit going on. It's legal stuff. Legal stuff takes a while. I don't think it gets done in time for it to – uh, be taken care of there like some fans think some people think lawsuits are quick and easy like that but they take a long time but I got App State beating Georgia Southern who you got Jalen yeah I'm going with uh, App State also you know it's crazy how not too long ago we were saying that Coastal and App State were at the bottom of the east and now they're the two fighting for the number one spot because James Madison can't compete I just think that's crazy that's uh some bell fun bell right I this one James Madison taking on Coastal Carolina here. I think James Madison can come out ready to play. I think they'll uh, take care of business against Coastal and actually beat Coastal. Who you got, Jalen? Even though Coastal's yeah, going, going to James the Mad uh, – You're going with oh, James yeah. Madison too? Yeah, I'm going, okay. I'm going James James Madison in this one. I think they need to avenge that loss they had last week against App State. They're going to beat Coastal. And you said they beat – does James Madison beat Coastal and App State win? App State wins the East? Yep. I think that oh, will. I, I, think that will I, think. I think that will happen. Arkansas State oh, versus it. Marshall. Marshall's another team trying to get the bowl eligibility. If they win, they'll be having six wins themselves. I got a. Uh, I think Arkansas State's going to beat them though. I think because they're on a tear right now. They're hot right now, and they're Butch Jones. Butch Jones got them trending in the right direction. Here's his third year at Arkansas State. So, give me Arkansas State to beat Marshall. Who you got, Jalen? Yeah, Butch Jones is really. Uh, give him a shout out. He really has transformed his team from the beginning of the year to now. They're one of the hottest teams in the Sun Belt. So I'm, I'm going to go Arkansas State on this one. South Alabama taking on Texas State. Uh, last week it was a high scoring game. Um, for Texas State and uh, Arkansas State, Arkansas State dropped like 70 points, I think, last week. Um, but I think uh, it, it's a tricky, it's a tricky game. I think I know Texas State's got TJ Finley. He's been doing a very good job this year. I just think that South Alabama 
goes on the road and takes care of business in San Marcos and gets their seventh win of the year. Who you got, Jalen? Yeah, I'm going to go with South Alabama in, uh, in this one, too. And I know early in the season when they lost the uh, uh, blow, I lost to uh, the Arcadians. But I think I think South Alabama is going to bounce back, go on the road, and, and beat Texas State. I know T.J. Finley and them are on a losing streak right now, but hopefully they'll be able to uh, stop South, South Alabama. But I think the South Alabama is going to get the win. Now, people are probably wondering uh, about bowl bids, where everybody's going to go here. So, I think, like, literally, all the, I think every Sun Belt school, if they all get 12 teams in there, which would be basically six, or, like, the minimum they would have it go to is six different bowl games. But there's going to be some five and seven teams that are, that are going to be on this list somewhere, trying to get spots somewhere. So, that will help out the bowl pitcher, because there's always been five and seven teams, because there's too many bowl games anyway to begin with anyway. But that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day there but look I think I think they'll all find a place somewhere it'd be really good like a flag bearing year for the Sun Belt for sure to have 12 schools go to a bowl games that's probably the most of any conference that I could think of right now off the top of my head shows you how competitive the Sun Belt is this year so um I saw the Cajuns looking at the first responders versus their uh versus uh Air Force that's in uh, Frisco, Texas, or Dallas, Texas, or something. I want to say Dallas, right there. Dallas, Texas. Yeah. Um. Uh, so yeah, we'll see what happens there. Um. But yeah, I think that's enough for this episode here. Thank y'all for tuning in to the Fishbowl Radio here. Hope y'all have a good and wonderful week. We'll see y'all next time here on the Fishbowl Radio.